You may have noticed that train wheels are not perfectly cylindrical, but conical. This design of the wheels was a marvel of engineering that solves two important problems. The first is by correcting the train's trajectory towards the center, which is called self-balancing. And the second one helps to achieve differential action. Without the invention of these conical-shaped wheels, train journeys would not have been possible for human civilization. Today, we will try to understand the physics behind the train wheels through this video. First, we look at the wheels. You can see that one side has a larger radius than the opposite side. We call the side of larger radius A and the side of smaller radius B. Now, if the wheel is rotated once completely, O will travel a greater distance than B. Hence, the wheel can never move in a straight line, always bending towards B. Since at the same time, A is traveling a greater distance than B, two wheels are permanently connected through a common shaft. Now, if the wheels are rotated, then both will travel equal distance. Since the contact point radius of both the wheels is same, try running the two wheels on the track. You can see that when the wheels move to one side while moving, it immediately returns to its balance state, which is called self-balancing. This conical shape ensures that the wheels never leave the track. But the question is, how does this conical arrangement create a self-balancing force? To understand this, you first need to know how forces acting on wheels act. Shown here are the main forces acting on the wheels while moving on a straight track. Reaction forces will always be placed along the conical surface. Take a single wheel to better understand. Now, if we let go of the wheel, what will happen? Yes, you guessed right. The wheel must fall to the left since the net force applied on the surface of the wheel is more to the left. Similarly, the left wheel will fall to the right. Therefore, when both wheels are connected by a common shaft, the net force applied to both wheels is centered and one cancels the other. That is why the wheels are located in the center of the track. When the wheels move to the right for some reason, an interesting thing happened. Did you notice that? It is clear that when the wheels move to the right, the entire train tilts to the left side, as you can see. Normal forces along the tilt are also tilted. If you analyze the forces in this situation, you will see that the net force increases to the left. This force automatically moves the wheels to the center of the track. As the wheel comes to center, the self-centering force disappears. Another force is also at work here. As the wheel moves to the right side of the track, side A of the right wheel and side B of the left wheel rests on the track. In this case, the right side wheel will travel more distance than the left side wheel. So the wheels will again move to the left. Thus, the wheels constantly move along the center on the track, maintaining its balance. Now the question is, what happens if we flip the wheels at the opposite angle? Simply put, the train will derail. But why? Okay, let's do this test right away. If the wheels are flipped, the reaction force will be applied outwards. Since the reaction force is always applied along the conical surface of the wheels, when the wheels move to the right side, the net force also will increase more to the right. This will cause the wheels to fall off the track. Also see the B side of the right wheel and the A side of the left wheel are positioned on the track. In this case, the left wheel will cover more distance and the right wheel will cover less distance. So the wheels will move more to the right. That is why the arrangement of the wheels is kept like this. Now let's see how differential action is achieved through this design. For example, when turning left, the right wheel has to travel more distance than the left wheel. And to achieve that, the right wheel must rotate at a higher speed than the left wheel. Otherwise, the left wheel will slip. 
which may cause accidents. But since the wheels are permanently connected through a common shaft, both the wheels will rotate at the same speed. Then again, these conical wheels became indispensable to us. Let's see how the train can turn very easily through these incredible conical wheels. When the train is moving straight, the inertia of the object causes the train to try to move straight. Therefore, side of the right wheel and side B of the left wheel stay on the track while turning. In this condition, the right wheel covers more distance than the left wheel. Therefore, even though both the wheels are turning at the same speed, the right wheel covers more distance and the train is able to turn easily. Flanges are used on the inside of the wheels for extra safety. Thus, this incredible design of train wheels makes rail journeys very easy and safe. Hope you understand the basic physics behind the train wheels. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and turn on the bell icon. Be the first to get video like this later.